Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the King Streetcar, arguably the most important streetcar line in the system and a line that in general rivals that of the subway system. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The origins of streetcar service on King Street can be traced back to the creation of Toronto's very first streetcar line on Young Street in 1861. At this time, the Young Streetcar would run along King Street from the St. Lawrence Market to Young Street before running north along Young Street to the Yorkville Town Hall. The King Streetcar as its own route would begin operations in 1874 with a line running along King Street from the Don River to Bathurst Street. The route would shortly thereafter be extended to Niagara Street in 1876 and then to Strawn Avenue in 1879. During the Canadian National Exhibition of 1879, service on the King Streetcar would be extended down Strawn Avenue to Wellington Street. In 1889, the Lee Avenue Streetcar would begin operations with this route running from the St. Lawrence Market east on King Street and Queen Street to Lee Avenue. Every second car would turn back at Woodbine Avenue, however. On May 27, 1891, service on the King Street car would be extended west to Dufferin Street, although every second car would operate this extension. All other cars would continue to terminate at Strawn Avenue. Also in 1891, service along the central portion of the King Streetcar would be shared with the Beltline Streetcar, which operated as a loop around downtown Toronto, with a portion of the line running along King Street between Sherburn Street and Spadina Avenue. On September 21, 1891, the King and Lee Streetcars would be merged to form a single route running from Dufferin Street to Woodbine Avenue, with every fourth car running beyond to Lee Avenue. This service pattern would last until May 18, 1892, when all streetcars would begin running to Lee Avenue. When electrification of the line began on September 5, 1892, horse-drawn cars would continue to be used on the line to operate service on the non-electrified sections of the line, while electric cars would operate the electrified segments. Electrification of the King Streetcar would be completed on May 15, 1893. On October 28, 1892, the King Streetcar would be extended west from Dufferin Street to Ronson's Vale Avenue. Service to the Canadian National Exhibition would be routed down Dufferin Street to the Dufferin Gates. On June 30, 1893, service on the King Streetcar would be extended east to Balsam Avenue. By the 1900s, service on the King Streetcar was operating from a Y at Neville Park Avenue along Queen Street and King Street to Sunnyside Loop. When the Toronto Transportation Commission took over streetcar operations in 1921, service on the King Streetcar would be extended to Neville Park and then through the newly built Neville Park Loop on July 2, 1922. On July 26, 1922, the King Streetcar would be rerouted out of Sunnyside Loop and instead operate to Humber Loop on Lakeshore Boulevard. On July 1, 1923, the King Streetcar would see a major change in its service as the line would be rerouted at both ends creating the King Streetcar we know today. At the east end of the line, the King Streetcar would absorb the Broadview Streetcar which operated from Arendale Loop at Danforth Avenue to Queen Street. The west end of the line would be rooted up Ronson's Vale Avenue to Vincent Loop at Bloor Street, replacing a branch line service provided by the Queen Street car, although it only went as far as a Y on Bowstead Avenue at the time. With these extensions, the King Street car would now operate its familiar U-shaped route we know today, from Arendale Loop to Vincent Loop, running along Broadview Avenue, Queen Street, King Street, and Ronson's Vale Avenue. During rush hour, some cars on the King Street car would be extended north along Dundas Street West to Runnymede Loop, while others would run west along Bloor Street to Jane Loop. This service pattern would remain in place up to the opening of the Young Subway in 1954. On September 24, 1940, PCC Street cars would fully replace the old Peter Witt cars on the line. The King Streetcar would remain unchanged beyond this point, periodically being joined by other routes such as the Dover Court Streetcar and the Long Branch Streetcar. 
The line would also share a sizable portion of its route with the Kingston Road streetcar and its tripper variant. With the opening of the Bloor Danforth subway in 1966, the King streetcar would have its terminus points moved from the old Arendelle and Vincent loops to the new Broadview and Dundas West stations, which were constructed adjacent to the old loops. After the opening of the Bloor Danforth line, the TDC had actually reduced service on the King streetcar, believing that people would simply take the subway instead. This notion, however, proved to be unfounded as ridership on the King Streetcar remained high, and so the TDC would quickly begin increasing service on the line again throughout 1966. With the introduction of the CLRV streetcars, the King Streetcar would be given the number 504. Up to this point, King Street was mostly lined by warehouses and industrial buildings outside of the growing financial center at Bay Street. This would begin changing throughout the 80s and 90s as those former industrial lands began to disappear and be replaced by condominium developments. On top of this, the rapid growth of Toronto's financial sector and the downtown core that followed it would cause ridership on the King Street car to begin increasing rapidly. In 1999, the TTC would report that the 504 King was moving around 52,200 passengers per day, and in fact, the number of people riding the King Street car outnumbered the number of people driving on King Street by a factor of 2 to 1. The 504 King Street car by this point was already the most heavily used surface route in the city and was moving more passengers per day than even the Scarborough RT line. With this in mind, the TTC and riders began to concern over the reliability of the route and if it could be not only maintained, but increased as ridership growth on the route wasn't expected to slow down. During rush hour, the 504 King was running at 2 minute intervals, which is roughly equivalent to the subway at rush hour, with 30 cars plying the line. This is actually down from the 50 cars that used to run the line before 1966, however vehicular traffic made it impossible to run this many cars on the line now. Back in 1993, the TTC attempted to create streetcar only lanes on King Street. This however was a failure as it was not enforced. In 2000, the TTC even went so far as to give nearly $100,000 to the Toronto Police to do a parking blitz on King Street to remove illegally parked cars. This would also be a failure. The TTC realized that something more drastic would have to be done to allow the King Street car to meet its current and growing demand. In 2000, the TTC would put out a report citing the issues with the line and potential solutions. These issues were the narrowness of King Street making it impossible to build a private right-of-way like what was done on Spadina Avenue, the lack of turn-back loops to allow for easier and quicker short turning, and congestion at Broadview and Dundas West stations which were both shared by the 504 King and the 505 Dundas streetcars. The TTC would suggest some solutions to these issues, these being Removing two seats near the rear doors of the CLRV cars to increase standing room. Expanding Broadview and Dundas West stations with passing loops to eliminate congestion. Restore Parliament Loop at the intersection of Parliament Street and King Street to allow turnback options. Rerouting either the King or Dundas streetcars with either King streetcars running to Castle Frank Station via Parliament Street or running Dundas streetcars to Pape Station via Carla Avenue, Riverdale Avenue, and Pape Avenue. Both of these options would require new tracks to be laid. The last solution suggested looked at removing vehicular traffic off of King Street altogether and converting it into a transit mall. In the interim, the TTC would also begin running ALRV streetcars on King Street taking them off of the Bathurst streetcar. The TTC would push ahead with its transit mall proposal, with the original plan being approved in March of 2001, with the proposal being King Street be closed to vehicular traffic from Sherburn Street to Spadina Avenue. A month later, the TTC would go even further and propose King Street be closed to vehicular traffic from Parliament Street to Dufferin Street. Regardless of its length, the overall plan would remain the same. The curb lane would remain open to vehicular traffic for deliveries. However, King Street could only be entered through right-hand turns and all vehicles would have to exit off of King Street at the next intersection. 
The curb lane would alternate what side of the street it was on within each block. In order to prevent through traffic, the side of the street that didn't have a curb lane would have its sidewalk extended out to the streetcar tracks. This isn't even the first time a transit mall had been proposed, as in the 1980s, then city councillor Jack Layton would propose a transit mall on Queen Street from Sherburn Street to Spadina Avenue in what was referred to as a poor man's subway. This idea never caught on as local business owners decried the loss of on-street parking. The TTC's proposed transit mall would fare no better than its 80s predecessor as it too would meet the same resistance from local business owners. The proposal would ultimately fall by the wayside, but remember what I just said about this proposal because it's going to come up again later. While the transit mall plan had fallen through for the time being, the TTC was able to move forward with its plan to expand Broadview and Dundas West stations to reduce the streetcar congestion caused there. These expansions would see a new track and platform added at the stations allowing for both the 504 King and 505 Dundas to have their own dedicated platforms instead of having to share one. Work at Dundas West Station would begin in September of 2002 and be completed two months later on November 24th, 2002. Work at Broadview Station would begin in 2003, however this project would take much longer as it included new stairwell and elevator work as well. With these expansions done, there was no longer a need for the King and Dundas streetcars to be rerouted to Castle Frank and Pape stations respectively, so this suggestion from the 2001 report was dropped. The reconstruction of Parliament Loop would also not occur. By 2015, the 504 King streetcar was moving around 65,000 passengers per day, which was three times the number of people who drove on King Street. The TTC would begin to look for ways to further maintain reliability on the line. This would come on June 19, 2016 with the introduction of the 514 Cherry Streetcar, which would run from Dufferin Loop along King Street to the new Distillery Loop on Cherry Street. In 2017, the TTC and City of Toronto would begin a pilot project on King Street that would see through traffic on King Street eliminated for vehicles. This project, known simply as the King Street Pilot Project, would span from Bathurst Street to Jarvis Street. Cars would only be allowed to enter and exit King Street via right turns and could only stay on King Street for a couple of blocks. Streetcar stops would be moved to the far side of the intersections and the sidewalks would be extended out to meet the tracks with ramps being included for better accessibility with the new Flexity streetcars. Drivers and business owners at first would complain about the project, however a report done by the City of Toronto would show that the pilot project had a tangible impact on the commute times for riders on the 504 King and 514 Cherry streetcars, and increased commute times for car owners was negligible at best. The pilot project was actually so successful that the ridership of the 504 King and 514 Cherry streetcars actually increased from 72,000 riders per day to 84,000 riders per day. On April 16, 2019, Toronto City Council would vote 22 to 3 in favour of making the King Street pilot project permanent. The final change to the 504 King Streetcar would come in 2018 when the TTC decided to abolish the 514 Cherry Streetcar in favor of splitting the 504 King into two routes after a pilot project undertaken earlier in the year due to track work had proven to be quite successful. This split would see the 504 King split into two branches. The 504A, which would operate from Dundas West Station to Distillery Loop, and the 504B, which would operate from Broadview Station to Dufferin Loop. The two branches would overlap in the downtown core where ridership was its heaviest. Today, the 504 King Streetcar remains the most heavily used surface route in the city, with the most recent ship rider report I can find showing the route moving around 84,300 passengers per day. By comparison, the Scarborough RT Line 3 only moved around 12,000 passengers per day, and the Shepherd Line Line 4 around 50,150 passengers per day. 
The 504 King Streetcar can be viewed as the most important line in the streetcar system and one of the most important in the entire TTC network, only behind the Line 1 and Line 2 subway lines. More people ride the King Streetcar each day than drive down King Street in a car and it has been like this since the 1990s. At one time there was an idea to run the downtown relief line subway under King Street due to both the King Street car's massive ridership but also due to King Street and Bay Street being the heart of Toronto and Canada's financial sector. While the planned subway line into downtown Toronto has shifted back onto Queen Street, there are still potential plans for the future of the King Street car. With the King Street pilot project being a big success, there is the idea of expanding it east to Parliament Street and west to Dufferin Street. There however has been no movement on this yet as of the making of this video. Another proposal is the extension of the 504B from Dufferin Loop to the proposed Park Lawn Loop. Service to Dufferin Loop would be replaced by the 503 Kingston Road streetcar. Lastly, while not related to the King streetcar directly, the redevelopment of the Portlands is planned to include a resurrected Broadview streetcar which would run from Broadview Station into the Portlands, although its exact route has yet to be determined. The Broadview streetcar hasn't been seen since 1923, although it will likely have a greater impact on the Dundas streetcar than on the King streetcar, and I'll get into why in my video about the Dundas streetcar. The King Streetcar serves a crucial role in the TTC network and this isn't changing anytime soon. Even with a dip in ridership due to the pandemic, it is likely, if not certain, the King Streetcar will remain the big hitter it is and in fact, as ridership continues to increase, more may be needed to keep the line running. What form these future projects may take is anyone's guess, but one thing is for certain, the King Streetcar will remain the king of Toronto's streetcar network. And with that, I will end this video here. Thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button because there are more videos like it on the channel and there are more videos like it on the way. If there's anything you want to say about the King Streetcar, don't be afraid to do so in the comment section down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.